welcome back to a homeschool episode of The Simple Farmhouse. I'm Laura and I'm so glad you're here. Hey everybody, so I had questions over on my Instagram account about homeschooling and I thought it might be helpful to just sit down and coffee across the table with a friend style, um, except I'm outside getting some sun, um, just have a little heart to heart about these big transitions that have been happening in our world. Um, a lot of you are homeschooling now for the first time and maybe that's scary to you. Maybe you're loving it. Maybe you're feeling overwhelmed. A lot of mixed reviews out there. So I just wanted to hop on and give some words of encouragement to any moms out there who could use some tips. So I thought I would sit and have coffee with you guys and just talk about um, maybe some of my earlier years of trying to figure out how to homeschool after bringing them home from a traditional school setting. There were a lot of things that I needed to figure out um, in terms of not trying to make it look like a traditional school setting. And there's a couple of ways where I kind of fell into that trap and it, it cost me some joy. So the first tip is put all of that aside. The, um, the way that you do things in a classroom in a typical school setting is not how it's gonna look at home and that's perfectly fine. Um, there are lots of ways that children learn. One of them is a classroom and one of them is sitting at home around a table. Another might be online learning. There's the Charlotte Mason approach, there's a classical approach, there's lots of different approaches to how kids can learn and grow. And so don't be afraid of experimenting and figuring out what works best for your family. It doesn't have to be all figured out on day one. So show yourself grace. Give yourself space to take care of yourself. This is one of the things that I notice most often with um, stay-at-home moms, even even if you're not homeschooling, just finding that time to make sure that you're well and make sure that you're ready to pour out and give to your kids. Because if you if you don't have anything left to pour out, how are you going to take care of them? And so, I know that sometimes it feels selfish to take care of yourself, but it's not because you're taking care of your family by taking care of yourself. And then I would say, give the kids lots of time to play and to figure out how they learn. So some of our kids, most of our kids actually are very creative and their minds just light up when we do things that are hands-on, that are visual. So I found that doing activities, um, going and seeing things, Reading, they love reading together. That's one of our favorite pastimes as a homeschooling family. Picking books that are on topic. So if you're reading about a particular time period in history, finding historical fiction or age appropriate, exciting books that they would enjoy reading together. And then finding ways to relax and enjoy that time together makes them look forward to it. And then to hop back on that idea of play, I love that quote by Einstein, and I'm not even gonna remember how it goes, but about how important it is for the mind to have creative outlets, and that that's the best way of learning is through creativity. And so allowing kids to play and to be creative is a big part of our day. A lot of times in the world they don't get the chance to do that because we're rushing around from one thing to the next and our schedules don't permit it. But one of the things that homeschooling will allow for you, in as long as um, you end up doing it, is that space. So um, play for the younger children and then finding personal giftedness for older children.
for our son that's piano. He just loves sitting and playing at the piano and I think if it was forced and if it was crammed into, you know, it's your 30 minutes of practice and you have to do it right now and there wasn't that freedom to explore, I think he would not look at it as fondly as he does. And so allowing kids to really pursue giftedness and to have the time to do that and to learn through play. So here's another tip. Some families really thrive on structure and I find that it's the way people are made. Um, some people can't thrive without um, a schedule and without a lot of structure and there's nothing wrong with that. And so incorporating that into your day, um, maybe it doesn't look the way it did when you were doing it in a traditional school setting, but still having those parameters that make you function well. Um, but some families don't thrive under a tight and oppressive schedule and I would say that we would fall into that category. So while we do have some structure to our school, the day isn't as structured as it would be in a typical traditional school setting. We allow space for getting up and moving around, we allow for things to interrupt and I think those interruptions are some of the best part of living when you can recognize that and um, allow those things to have beauty and input in your life. You know, when a friend calls for a play date or someone you haven't seen in a while wants to have lunch or time with um, grandparents, that's something that is so precious, time, and it's something you get as a homeschool mom with your kids. Practically speaking, there are opportunities now for homeschoolers that there weren't before in years past. And taking full advantage of all of those different opportunities is something that we didn't even figure out right away. There's lots of online tools, free things on YouTube, on um, K through 12. There's schools that you can take part in that are free. If you're looking for something that is Christian private school geared. Maybe you came out of the private school system in a Christian setting and you're looking for that accredited opportunity for your children. We use Liberty University Online Academy and we have loved it. It's flexible for the high school kids. Um, they're still able to complete their work in a very timely manner and still have that time for pursuing personal giftedness that homeschooling really brings to the table, which I didn't want to lose. We still have that through online resources like Liberty. So I do recommend that. And then if you are looking for free resources, there's plenty of those as well. There's just so much information out there now that you don't have to be afraid of not being equipped. Don't be afraid to have your children help out more around the house and to take personal responsibility for the goings on in the household. That is one of the benefits I feel of having kids at home is they, they are able to contribute more. And so that allows me to be able to pour out more and to invest in them and to also have outlets like this with you guys.
So having stations around the house has been really helpful. A table where you can gather together and do group subjects and then spaces where they can work independently. So one of those, for example, would be our laptop station where kids can sit and do typing or they do their math curriculum, which is an online thing that we use. They can watch a YouTube video on a subject that we're learning about. This is all done at the laptop station. And so it decreases the crowd around the homeschool table. And then I'm also working on an art studio right now. It's my husband's old office and it's just not being used. He worked from home for a while and then when he left, it just kind of started collecting junk. So we're gonna turn it into an art studio where the kids can work on projects, where they can work on art. All of our art supplies will be in there. It kind of frees up the storage from our homeschool room, which I like to keep neat because it's right off of the kitchen and it can be cluttered sometimes. So this will help me alleviate that pressure and then they'll have separate workspaces. So I can send someone to go and do a project or go and do an art class off in the studio while someone's doing typing or math over in the other alcove that I created, the computer station, while I'm working with someone on language arts in the homeschool room. And having those stations really helped us to make our day very efficient. And again, any way that you can streamline gives more time for creativity and play, which you will see so much benefit from. So don't be afraid of allowing them that extra time to be children and to enjoy childhood. The coronavirus has been an interesting turn of events for our country, and I don't think it's something we could have ever really fully prepared for. It's just something that happens and you end up thrown into situations like homeschooling your kids, something you never thought you would be thinking about or doing, and here it is. So I hope that you find encouragement in, no one has it figured out. Homeschool moms don't have it figured out either. When I sit here and I give you tips, there are still things that I'm learning. We've been in this for eight years and I'm still learning and growing every day. And it's actually one of the things that I love about homeschooling. I'm also learning alongside of my kids, um, not just topically as we learn together and grow together, but being sanctified along the way as I'm able to learn from my kids and um, grow personally. So I hope that instead of becoming a burden that it becomes a gift and that maybe this reorientation um, becomes a new way of living, whether you keep homeschooling or you don't keep homeschooling, that we just have a new outlook on our lives and that it continues forward and something as difficult as a pandemic can end up being an avenue of grace in your life and in your children's lives. So the sun is going down now, but I had some other ideas pop into my mind after I walked away. One of them is um, hopefully an encouragement to you is to see this chapter for as long as it lasts, this homeschooling chapter as an opportunity to be the primary architects of your family life. It gets to look exactly how you want it to look. Um, no one else is running your life. It's completely in your control what's going to happen for the day not that things won't upset it but that you can have a single goal for the day and then also for the year of how you want your family to look and then taking the steps to accomplish that i found it helpful to also have a family motto for the year what is it that we want to be our goal what is the one thing that we want to accomplish this year not that you're not going to accomplish anything else you'll be very productive for the year, but having that one thing out in front of you that you're pursuing and you're chasing is, I think, a great way to harness the time and to see progress and to be encouraged and to have joy. 
So for example, for one of the children, it could just be a subject that they're weak in. This year, we're gonna strengthen ourselves in math. This year, we want to spend more time reading together. This year, we want to um, have a deeper spiritual life together or personally and um, setting those goals. It helps you to prioritize your time and your day and ultimately your year. I also had some questions regarding curriculum. I hope that you find previous videos helpful and I will also do a follow-up end of the year recap and review on the curriculum we used this year, so stay tuned for that. If you found this video helpful, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and tap the bell to receive notifications.